All right. So let's get started again. Okay. Look. We're going to get started again. So to kind of show you what that is, here, here's it in 3D, which we'll do. We'll solve it here also. Oh, that's cool. So that's kind of what it is. And so what we're basically going to do is, where was it? Are we going to use it better now? We're basically going to make a plane out of those two edges, and then see where that plane crosses this piece, and then this, that, that's our, our force length, or, or the length of our vector. So wherever that, that plane intersects. Now, this is the length of our vector. Does that make sense now? So, that's so we're going to make a plane out of these other two surfaces. So we're going to make a plane out of those two surfaces. <clears throat> and then we're going to copy that plane down to the end of here. And then wherever that intersects, that's our, our point. So does that, you guys see where we're going now? <laughs> no, yes. No. I see, I see it's both, on both ways. Can you lock your computer so we can use it? Yeah. Oh, did I? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> did, is it on your computers? No. Google. No? No, it's okay. I would be proud of my Google. Yeah. You can take yours. Oh, really? Did I have it only on one of them? I don't use Google. I have Skype. I don't use Neighbor. You use which one? Neighbor. It's different. Oh. Is it better? Mm -hmm. Well, if you can read it. Yeah, then, uh, yeah, that's okay. It's hard enough trying to translate some English. <laughs> There. You guys want to know? I thought I, I thought I had done that earlier. Was it on there earlier? Nope. No. You guys should. I thought it was on your screen so you could see it. Nope. So basically, well, what we're doing is we're going to make those planes into into a plane because two axes can find a plane. Yeah. Curious why those Because we could have done these two and then figure out that one first. Oh. It just doesn't matter which one. It's just that's the one that I picked. Do that here. So basically what we're going to do, and we're going to make it come from the bottom of the vector. Right? Uh -huh. so I need that, that plane that's made up of the, the purple and the green to come from the bottom of this up. So I'm just going to copy <coughs> that line and that line and then extend them out so that they're going to cross this line. Then I'm going to extend this line down and it should be starting to look a little familiar. Then up here Check. Try and do an angular dimension. It won't let me. Good. And it won't let me. Good. So I know those are those are curlinear lines. So now this is the same as that purple line. And this is the same as the green one, right? Except now it's coming the same as these two lines, right? So now I'm going to do my cutting plane just like I did before. Remember when we did piercing points a few weeks ago? That's what we're going to do now. We're going to use this to find the piercing point. So I'm going to come from here, up, and then bring that back down to where it hits. And bring 
that point up here where it hits, and then connect them, bring that over, and then back down. So right there is my piercing point, right? So now this line can end there, and that line ends there. So now this is our, our vector. That's our vector blade. So that's where that plane hits that line. So we don't need to figure out visibility and all that stuff. We're just going to shorten it back up to, to where that vector is, to that piercing point. Does that make sense? Yes, no. So we, we've, we kind of, we've projected these edges. Same thing here. Found the piercing point. And then we just extend this line to where that piercing point was, and now that's our vector length. Yes? Okay. <clears throat> so from here, now we're going to copy this. Copy that, and we're going to move this one down here also. And I'm just going to do some trimming to, to tidy it up a little bit. So from that corner, now I've made that that purple and green plane. That's where it was, right? The purple and green plane, as well as using to find that point. So does it make sense? That now that point is on that plane. Yes. And we know that edges on a plane are parallel. So now that gives us this corner. So we can copy that there. So that gives us the top corner there. So we'll just trim that. We'll just copy that one because we already got the length of four. We'll copy this one. Copy that one and shorten that. So now we've now we've trimmed off that and that to the correct length also by making that that prism. Does that make sense? We we used. <clears throat> this plane, the, the green and purple plane, to cut that. And then we just use parallel lines to build a prism out of it. And in doing so, we came down now, we can cut off this line to the right length. We can cut off that line to the right length. And actually we could have done that as, as soon as we finished this plane. We had both of those lengths, right? So I could have just copied that there and copied that one there and been done with that part. So now I'm just going to clean up a little bit. We don't need that anymore. Bring that back up. I can cut that off. So now I'm just shortening them from the physical lengths to the vector links. Does that make sense? Because I know in the front view, they're correct. And so in the top view, I just need to extend that up and then cut it off where, where they intersected. So now what do I need to know? What do I want to know? The force, right? <clears throat> so are there any forces I can measure right now? Yes, no. Which one? The yellow one, right? <clears throat> we got this true length. Right here is true length. 
So that's parallel to the pulling line. So that's true length. So I'm going to just do a line dimension. Got it. Now I'm just going to go into my dimension style. Make it three places. Right? If I want to move that over to the. Okay, that's kind of messy. If I want it to be 100 newtons on the dimension, how do I do that? So let me just undo that. Undo that. I want to make. I want to be in newtons, not just in inches. What? What was that? Lord Ken? Can you just add two more zeros? Yeah, add two zeros. So if I just go to properties, and I come down to my primary units, I can put my suffix on it. So I want it in, and the scale factor ought to be 100. So now that's 421 newtons. So what about these two? Can I do those two right now? Can I do this line or this line? <coughs> Can I figure out the true length of those? What do I have to do to, do, to get true length? <coughs> so I can make an auxiliary view, right? So I can do an auxiliary view, get true length, measure it. What's another way I can do it that we did last week? Can you do like a UCS? No. Because no, we're only in 2D here. Maybe we could go into 3D and draw it out and, and everything, and then just measure it. But what can we do from here? to get that length without having to do another view. Rotate it. Rotate it. Where we'd like, like we did last week, where we bring this up to horizontal and then we project it down. <clears throat> so if we go from here to here, we go from where it would have been parallel to the, to the vertex down. All right. <clears throat> so I, I do a circle there from the, the extreme point. I bring it down and connect it back up to the vertex. Now is this line true length? Yep. So a line. There we go. Match properties. That one. To that one. So that's 318 unit newtons. <clears throat> then we need to figure out that back piece too. So same thing, right? Circle here to there. Line from there, to there, and back up. So that's the breakdown <coughs> from our original resultant of 600 newtons. So that there, that's, that's where the components all went. Okay. Why do we trim what? 
What? The three forces fighting the sources. Um, on actually on this one we extended it or extended because before it was a physical representation of it. The lengths were physical lengths, and now we have the length C point force is not equaling a physical piece because the the angle is the same no matter if we're measuring the force or the physical piece. So the angles were good, but the forces are different than the actual physical length, and so that's why we were, we're trimmed them and extended them because now it's now this is a force diagram, not a physical diagram. Does that make sense? Questions? Yes, no. <clears throat> well, I'll do an inventor now so you can see kind of the same thing in a, in a 3D met. Uh, so we've already made the parallel plane, made that parallel plane, made it parallel to the bottom, and we're going to do our point from here to here. So now that point is the, our force. So we measure, so just M for measure. Click on the point, click on the vertex. Now I get our breakdown. So we got our, our length of it. And then I just turn off stuff that I don't want anymore. So now plane, I'm going to pick that edge and that edge. So you can see now it's picking up, it's those two. Now plane again, that plane, the bottom point, and then a point on that line, and that's that surface. <coughs> right click, visibility off. Now plane from there to there. That one to that one, point. And so that's the length of the vectors on this one. This is a different, it's not the same as one as what we just did in, in 2D. And now you can see where the, the length of the vectors are according to it. And I, and I did one set of planes at a time, because otherwise it just becomes a big, Mess. Um, do I just turn on all the planes? I guess I can't turn them all on at once. Which is a good thing because it's just it's just all over the place. So you guys want me to see me do that one again? Or does that make a little bit more sense? Yes. Ready to go back to an easier one? No. All right. So here's another example. Here we have two boats, two great looking boats. <laughs> <clears throat> and so now it's one inch wheels, 10 knots. It's no longer a force. Now we're dealing with the speed. And we have our directions for that. So they're both moving. This one at one knot, that one at, or this one at 10 knots, and that one at 15 knots. <clears throat> and so we want to know how close are those things going to pass to each other. So how, how are we going to do this? What point of intersection? Where they would intersect. But are they going the same speed? Are they going the same distance? No. So we, we can't really tell. I mean, we could tell where their paths would cross, but we don't know where they would be at that time. And that's what we want to figure out. We want to figure out where they're going to be at the closest point. Well, you can find the intersection, find the distance, and find how long it will take each boat to get to that point. So how do we do that? Well, extend, extend the vector. Extend them out. So you're saying extend that. Yeah. Extend that. Okay. Now find that distance. Are 
and then, but how are we going to figure out the, 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 where they'd be at that so point? So the, the green buds, if they're both going the same speed. But they're not. So you don't know which well, one is. Well, it says one really inch is. Ten knots. Ten so this knots one, and that's going ten knots. And this one's going at fifteen the knots. Overhead, you can assume they're on the same plane. So. Yeah. But this one's going fifteen knots. They're not going the same speed. Yeah. So if you're working both of them essentially to divide it, then on a after zero? No. <laughs> Don't we need to find the duration of time they... Yeah, you need, so we need to figure out the time. <coughs> but that would that'd be helpful, but can, can we... What we really care about is where what's, what the, what's their closer going to be? Because we don't really care about the time if it's not... Well, if they're not going to hit right now. Measure from the front of the boat. Yep, and and the boat is just a figure. It does. It's not. It, just worry about the vector. Well, that's you're going to oh, measure from the base. That's that's not really the size of the boat. I know, but you're going yep. to measure from the tip. Yeah. And so, what? How are we going to do that? Same You're on the right track, but the wrong way. So right, right now we have two things moving. It's kind of hard to do it with two things moving, right? Is there a way we could do it where now we can say we could assume we could make the the problem behave as if one was sitting still? Would that be possible? Yeah. Uh, I don't answer that. One. But, but I, was, I was curious. Going back to the, when they were crossing methods, why couldn't you take the the yellow path from the end of the or from the tip of the, uh, the vector to where it crosses and divide that by 1.5 and then on the green one divide because that Because now we're doing math. <laughs> but if it works, uh, I'd rather do that. Yes, you can do it math-wise, right? Yeah, we're, we're we all know that you can do it with algebra. <laughs> we're not doing it with math. We're doing it by drawing it. But it will work. <laughs> I'm not saying it won't work. Oh, okay. I'm saying... You can do anything with math. I mean, there are books and books on how to do everything we've done all semester with math alone and not drawing it. I'm not arguing that you can't do it math mathematically. I'm wanting to figure out how to do it graphically. And take less time than doing the math. So let's go back to trying to keep one of those things still. What can we do to possibly keep one of those things still? Are those the angles between them? Kind of, but not really. What can we do to the vectors? Here, let's make this a little bit less complicated. <laughs> let's get rid of those. Now we all, all we have is the vectors. So that's where the vector's starting, that's the, the force of it, or the speed. And this is, that's all we need to be able to, to solve the problem. Right, I need to copy one of them, where should I put it? So if I copy this one, where should I put it? I need to connect this one to this one. Look familiar, kind of? But where, where am I going to put it? Bottom of the tail. Tail. Yeah. Because before we were adding them, we were putting tip to tail, right? Yeah, but now it's now we're wanting to do what? Tip to tail. subtracting it. So what should we do? The opposite way. What's the opposite way? Tail to tail. Tip to tip. Tip to tip. So instead of going tail to tip, now we're going to go tip to tip. I'm going to copy that. There. So now we've basically eliminated the diff. Now all we have is the difference between the two vectors. There. So now if we bring this line over, that's how far apart <coughs> they are. 
and this one's moving that way. So if we draw a line from here, perpendicular to that line, and copy that vector, now we can figure out the triangle to figure out where they would meet. So we're just going to do a nice little fillet. And so that's where they would meet. But this one is not starting there, it's actually starting here, right? So at the same time, that's where they would be. So it would actually be point there. We just move that point from that position to that position. So when this boat is here, this boat will be there. And that's the closest they're going to be. Does that make sense? No? You need to put the boats back in. You need to put the boats back in. <laughs> But the boats aren't to scale, so you, you, you might you go, oh, but look, they're almost going to crash. But don't worry about the scale of it. <clears throat> so that, that's the closest that they're, that they're going to be. Uh, so so they're, they're not going to hit. Yeah. When the other one is there, the green is already going to be past it. What was that? When the other one is there, the green is going to be up there already. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so by the time. The other one, and that's because he's already closer to him. And he's kind of further along. What? Math would have been Well, you want to try it the mathematical way. You've got another one over here that you can do later. <laughs> try and do it math, and then try and do it here. See what you get. Um, so there's those ones to work on. There's also this one. If you want to try it out. Yeah, we've got a little pulley here with a weight that's 600 newtons point down on it. This thing is 300 newtons, and you've got a force this way of what is that? Um, I think it's like 500 newtons. You have 500 newtons pulling this way. This thing has 300 newtons pushing down because of the weight of it. And then this pulley is trying to pull it that way with 600 newtons of force. So what would... You can have the, all those things pulling on it. So what would the resultant be? Which way yeah. would it go? What would it do? So... How do we need to start this out? Uh, find out if the state of equilibrium. Well, how would we draw our vectors for this? Because we need to have something that's like this, so we can figure it out, right? You'll have a force going down from the block because of the weight. Yep. And a force going down. So I might as well just copy this one over here. I'm going to build my little my little force diagram. So I have that going that way. So I draw a line here going down three, right? And then you're going to have a 600 going up. Going that way, right? From that angle. So I can measure that angle. That angle wasn't a nice angle. I could also copy this, put it there, and then if I use the lengthen command right here, and I say T for total, it's out to be six. Pick on the line. It makes it the right length. So now, based on this, now I can do it pretty much exactly like we did this one to find the answer. Okay? And then you have another boats. This time the speeds are a little bit different. So, All right. any questions?
questions. So, no. All right.